Okay, um, this morning I made a decision to suspend Dylan Baxter for the opening game versus Hawaii for violation of team rules. I think this is an extremely strong message, a very severe punishment for a player that may be our most potentially skilled player on our whole roster to miss his first game. Hopefully that message not only helps him, but helps our team and especially our freshman class. This is our first class coming in, first class we've signed here at USC. We want to make sure that they understand that we have extremely high expectations for all of our players, even the young ones, on and off the field. As far as uh, practice, we got banged up a little bit. Um, guys coming out during practice, Hayes Pillard with a knee, um, Robert Woods with a knee, Simi with his neck, Nick Perry with a knee and an ankle. It's probably the most severe of them as far as having to get it checked out. Um, there was good, good energy in practice, very competitive, short yardage and goal line, um, live drill um, with our ones and twos. Um, so it's good to see our guys respond in probably the hottest practice um, that they've been exposed to yet. Coach, yesterday you mentioned a couple times about interceptions, and today there seems to be more. Are you disappointed with that? Yeah, very disappointed um, on one side, on the offensive side, because um, we had done such a great job, and here come a couple yesterday and a couple more today. Um, on the other side, I'm pleased with the defense that we're getting some turnovers after basically five days of nothing. So um, it's good on one side and bad on the other. With the back, so he'll be allowed to practice, but just not play in the first game? Yes, yeah, so he'll practice um, just as normal. When we get to that week, he won't be in our game plan, obviously, so he won't won't practice from the standpoint of getting plays um, in the game plan for him, but he'll still be practicing. Um, we'll probably send him down to service team that week to help our defense prepare. Will he be making the trip to Hawaii? Don't know that yet. Um, still trying to figure that out. Um, there's reasons for him to go that I think, as far as bringing him so that he sees what he misses in purpose and he has that feeling, so it, it hurts more. But also, uh, you know, it's a Thursday game, and with the travel schedule, he'd be missing school. Um, so I, I got to figure that out. But when you made the decision, was Hayden or, or McKay advised it before, or you just go ahead and go with it? I made the decision this morning. Um, I talked to both of them about it. Um, they were in complete, full support of it. Thought it was a great message, um, especially as we're all new here. Um, so it, it was good for them to be on the same page. With Armand back, do you feel like you have your defense, you know, everybody back and then a cohesive win, I guess? Um, I think so. Uh, up front, you know, we're missing T.J. Bryant, who was expected to compete for a starting job um, in the back end. But um, we feel it coming together, especially in the front seven. Do you feel like the defense is ahead of the offense? And if so, at what point do you think the offense will pace catch up? Well, I thought the offense was ahead of the defense. But I realized it was because Armand wasn't practicing. So as soon as he started practicing, then the defense was ahead of the offense. Um, you know, ho hopefully he continues to grow uh, under our scheme, continue to develop his technique. Because right now, you know, he just takes over practice. Uh, probably the only guy I remember on the front doing that while we were here, even with the great players that were here, from Mike to Sean, Mike Patterson to Sean Cody. To Cedric Ellis was Kenichi Udizi at times could do that. He could just take over the game, um, the whole practice, and so it's it's great to see. How big a loss would it be if Nick's out for an extended period of time? It'd be a big loss. Um, he's doing great, um, ha having a really good camp. Um, so is West, so that would help us. Uh, I think we got three really really big time ends, um, and all three of them would probably start it anywhere else. Um, but you no, know, that would be a big loss for us. Wayne, how did Dylan take the news? Well, I don't think he was happy by any means, um, but uh, he's got two choices. You know, uh, this is adversity right now for him, and he can deal with it two ways. What I told him, you know, he can sit around and pout and think that he's being picked on or, or used as an example, um, and then he can stay over there and you know um, we'll keep moving on without him, or he can take this and move on from here. This is over. This is it. Um, in his past now, and he can work to get ready for the Virginia game. Do you know if his situation will also be addressed by judicial affairs, if it happened on campus? I do not know. Florida and Alabama kind of made a few waves by closing off practice, getting up all scouts. Is it, are scouts still welcome here, and what impact does that have on the program? Yeah, there, there's a lot of things being looked into here, um, 
because we're different than everybody else with all the rules with the NCAA and the practice and stuff. So we're still trying to figure out once um, we get to the regular season exactly who's in and who's out and how long people are going to be here. Um, that's an ongoing process, one that we would have hoped maybe was nailed by now. But because of the new regime coming in, it's taken us a little bit longer to get everything um, nailed on that. We would, you know, I would really try not to um, kick them out because, uh, you know, this is you know, extremely valuable for them and for our players. I wouldn't want to take that away from our players. Um, you know, I think that our guys practice at a high level, and um, I'd like for scouts to see that because I think it helps their draft status, as you can see by over the last three years, 27 players drafted here, so um, I wouldn't want to do that. Were you happy with how Markeith responded to his punishment? Yeah, yeah, Markeith came out and uh, had, had a good practice today, um, you know, and it's a freshman learning mistake. Can you comment on how the kicking game has improved and if it, will that change your play calling at all if it, if it doesn't improve? Yeah, it does. Uh, I had to deal with that um, last year when we hit a stint where we really couldn't make anything, um, for instance, the Alabama game. Um, so uh, we had to kind of get to a, a different idea of going for it and playing in three down territory, playing knowing that you're going for it and so forth. So um, hopefully we don't have that problem here. Good. Have you have you informed the team yet of uh, Dylan's suspension? I have not. No, I've not, I haven't had a team meeting yet. Um, they were all in other things and working out, and so I'm not. What did you think of Mark Tyler and the goal line and short yardage stuff today? Yeah, I did good again. Mark is probably, you know, if somebody said right now who's maybe the surprise at camp, not from a, a standpoint we didn't have high hopes for him, but from production level prior to this camp, I would say Mark would be would be the guy. Um, he's really done a great job on a, di different, a bunch of different things for us. Um, as a big back, the perception usually is they can't come out of the backfield and catch the ball. He does that really smooth and good hands. So. We're very pleased with him. Think about how Bradford has responded since this uh, since this scrimmage. I mean, he, he had a tough scrimmage, but he yeah. seems to respond pretty well. No, he has. Um, he's come out here and worked on little things, which sometimes are hard, especially senior and a fifth-year senior. And sometimes they don't want to necessarily take coaching because they think that you know they know it all. Um, he, he's done a good job and has improved on some of the issues, especially in the outside zone game.